Christ. Step two in our prayer this morning. Is anybody praying this morning? Can I see your hand if you're praying? Step two in our prayer. We're still in Psalm 91 verse 2. It says, I will say. I will what? I will say. Not I will think. I will what? I will say. That means it will come out of my mouth. This morning, it will come out of your mouth. Can I have an amen from a believer? He said, I will say two things. Three actually. I will say of the Lord, number one, He is my refuge. Everybody say, God is my refuge. God is my refuge. Yeah. I will say, God is my refuge. Number two, I will say, He is my fortress. Abandoning his fortress. I want to say shame on Christians today who go and seek for protection from deities. I want to say in this morning, with no intention of offending you, shame on you. You have not found the secret of God being our fortress. I mean, when I gave my life to Christ in the early 80s, we would never dream of it. That is why you need to say, Computer, please put it up there. When I, you must also be in the spirit. Do you see? Uh, you see, machines, they can fail you. That's why in heaven they have books. The books were open, no computer. Ubuti Ubutu. He everybody say he is my refuge. He is my refuge. And my fortress. My fortress. My God. My God. In him will I trust. He is my refuge. You are my fortress. I will trust in you. You are my refuge. No refuse. Refuge. Refuge. My fortress. In him will I trust. I will trust you, God. Is there anybody on this Sunday morning who can pray and say, God, I will trust you. Lift up your voices and begin to trust in the Lord. Lift up your voices and begin to trust in the Lord. We are praying and we are saying, God, I am trusting in you. 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 Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost to speak in tongues this morning. Receive the gift of the Holy Ghost to pray. Oh, how I love this prayer time. How I love to pray. Yes, Lord. My refuge. Hey, choir. Pray. Pray. We love you, Lord Jesus. For thou, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. You are my glory. You are the lift of my head.
Are your Bibles still open? Verse 3. Our prayer time is gradually coming to an end. Mashoke e andole moshe. Everybody says surely. surely. Most Christians, the only surely they know is surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. But today I'm showing you another surely. Say surely. Oh, I'm the only one who's excited this morning. Surely. Surely. Surely what will happen? Oh, I'm the only one who's excited this morning. I said surely what will happen? He shall deliver from the snare of the fowler. noisome pestilence keep quiet keep quiet be still and know that I am be still and know that I am be Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare. Lift up your voice and begin to thank the Lord for delivering. Begin to thank the Lord. I need to hear the church in prayer. That's why we came to church. God will be speaking to us through Bishop later. Now it's our turn to speak to God and say, God, thank you for your deliverance. Thank you, Lord God, for I can feel people praying this morning. I feel people praying this morning. I feel prayer in this place. In the choir, I need prayer. Among the ashes, I need people praying. A cover lady standing at the door and praying. Mothers at the back have lifted up their hands and are praying. Pastors in the front row. Yeah! With faces full of agony, are saying thank you. I can see my mummies and daddies, young people praying. Surely he shall deliver thee. We are praying this morning. We are saying, Lord, thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your deliverance. Be still and Let me just read the rest. Psalm 91 verse 4. He shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall, shall be thy shield. And buckler. Verse, nine, verse 5. I'm sorry. Thou shalt not be afraid. <laughs> thou shalt not be afraid. Amen. For the terror by night. Amen nor for the arrow that flyeth by day. Amen. Nor for the pestilence. Pestilence, you cry. He's worrying us all. Everybody say pestilence. Shame. pestilence. That walketh in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Ah, verse 7. Oh, am I the only one who's excited? A thousand shall fall at thy side. And 10,000 at thy right hand. But it shall, I'm, I'm prophesying into this week. That's why you came to church. That's why you came to church. <laughs> but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold. And see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge. Even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Verse 11. Yes. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. Is somebody praying in tongues? Makori and Denemesha. 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. 13, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. 
the young, young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under foot 14 because he has set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him this is God speaking to you I will set him on high because he hath known my name verse 15 he shall call upon me how can somebody call upon the name of the Lord I am Tori and and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and I will honor him with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation you can clap to the Lord now lift those hands to God down at your feet oh Lord is the most high place in your presence I seek your face I seek your face I seek your face I seek your face let's sing it again down at your feet come on down at your feet oh Lord is the most high is the most high in your presence in your presence I will seek I seek your face I will seek I seek
sing it again, church. For there is no higher calling. There is no greater honor than to bow and kneel before. Lord, I can feel your presence in this place. I'm amazed. But Lord, I'm embraced. Oh, Lord, I live to worship you. I live to worship you. Oh, Lord. Sing it. I live to worship you. I live to worship you. Oh, Lord. I live to worship you. Sing it. Oh, Lord. Do you mean it? I live to worship you. I live to worship you. worship him, just worship him, just worship him, just worship him, in your own words, in your own way, you can sing this song if you, you can sing with your spirit, you can
You can sing with your understanding. You can say, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You can sing with your spirit. You can sing with your spirit. Paul said, I will, I will pray with my understanding and I will pray with my spirit. I will sing. Yeah. I'll take little. Sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Want to tell the Lord this morning that great is the Lord. Great is the Lord who is worthy of our praise. In the city of our God, the holy place. The joy of the whole earth. The joy of the Says great is the Lord in whom we have the victory. Is the Lord in whom we, we have, have the victory. He aids us against the enemy. He aids us against the enemy. We bow down. We bow down.
lift your hands and let's sing it to the Lord one last time. Lord, come on. It's so beautiful. Lord, we trust. Because of you who are Lord. To you alone are God eternal Cause you alone are God eternal Cause you alone are God eternal Sing it to our Lord You alone are God eternal hallelujah mean? I said, wow. Hallelujah simply means praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At first, when you wanted to see whether somebody was a Christian, you said, praise the Lord. If you want to visit, <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. I said, oh, hallelujah, sister. Hallelujah. They said, yeah, he's their brother. Now, nice. What's up? What's up? We say, now we say, Chale how? Chale fresh. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because <laughs> you alone are God eternal. Sing it one more time. Because you. Sing of your love forever. Come on. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. I can sing of your love forever. Let's sing that again. Come on. I can sing of your Sing of your love forever. I can 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 sing of your love forever. I
mountains and the sea Your river runs with love for me And I will I can't hear you I love me too Come on And I Come on And I will Oh what? I will sing I will sing of your love for me Come on I will sing of your love for me I will sing of your love for me I will sing of your love for me Oh I feel like dancing It's foolishness I know
like dancing. Oh, it's foolishness, I know. But Bishop, when the world has in the light. somebody this is church say so wanted to come to church you're welcome to church and tell him in case you're not aware this is the encounter service amen wonderful well it's a blessing for us to be here amen and to enjoy the blessing of a beautiful beautiful service this is the beautiful church with so many beautiful people like you, and like the one sitting by you. Tell your neighbor, I'm happy to be sitting by a beautiful person like you in this beautiful church. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. I'm going to take a couple of announcements and then we will carry on from here. Right. Um, midweek service on Tuesday. Make sure you're here and be a part of the service. I believe that God is going to be gracious to us. Right. Um, turning point on Thursday morning, 9 a.m. to is it 10 o'clock or 9, okay? Um, on Sweet Melodies Thursday mornings, you can listen to it on Sweet Melodies, but it's still happening live here. Come and be part of the great work that God is, uh, that is happening right here in the Kodesh. 21 days of prayer and fasting starting tomorrow. All right. Ask the one sitting by, if you are not clapping, it means you don't want to fast, you see. What a shock, what a shock, what a shock. So if we are clapping under protests. Anyway, it's happening live. Amen. And we're all going to be here. And the book for the fasts is He That Hath. And the books are here. Listen. Now, if you go to the bookshop right now, you find the price of the books. And not only this bookshop, any other bookshop, you go abroad and all that, the price of the book is about $25 in Accra, in a bookshop is 30 Ghana cities. But for this fasting time, it is 18 Ghana cities. Because I want everybody, I want you to do the personal negotiations. Because I want you to have the book. Say amen. So I want everybody in this church to have one. If you want one, you, have, you want to have one now, lift your hand up. And then they will bring it to you right now. Lift your hand up. They'll bring it to you. Very good. The ushers have them. The Akaba ladies have them. Pick them up. Pay. Please make sure they have change of two cities. You can give 20 cities so that you don't say, oh, I don't have change. And now they become, becomes a problem. That is their booster that they are giving you. So please give it back to them, the two cities. Everybody, if you need a copy. And, and um, you see, I, I, I believe it's so important that we all have it. And I'm going to be inspecting the books. I'm going to inspect it myself personally. Because I know how valuable it will be for you. So make sure you have it. Say amen. Have the book and keep it. We are going to be studying it and praying with it. And I believe you are going to have an amazing time from, the, from tomorrow all the way to the 10th of February. And the prayer times are going to be every evening from 5 p.m. till 8. Now if for medical reasons or any other particular reason you cannot fast, you should still pray. Because the emphasis is on prayer and not just the fasting. Did you hear what I said? I like somebody's smile when I say that. Because, said, oh, I like prayer. No, somebody said, when I'm fasting, I get hungry. Why, why should you not feel hungry when you're fasting? Anyway, so make sure you are part of it. Make sure you, you come along. Make sure you come for the evening meetings. And on Saturdays, we are going to meet from the morning 6 a.m. till about 10 o'clock we close. 
you are going to meet and pray every Saturday morning. After the prayer in the morning, then the fasting is over. Isn't it easy? Right. So, but be part of it. And let's see what God will do as we um, flow along in the service. Amen. Are you here or you go home? Right. So, are the books being sold? Are you getting the books? 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 Look, you cannot have a book. You cannot um, have any credits on your phone if you don't have a book yet. So, don't say, I don't have money. You have money to buy credits, but I don't have money to buy a book. What a shock. And after church, I'll be walking around the canteen. All those who will be eating, will be eating under the, uh, in the canteen, and then all those people will find out whether you have a book before you are buying kinky. You need to have it and feed your spirit. Fantastic. Right. Basel meetings on Saturdays. Um, this Saturday is happening live. Um, on Saturday, you know your time and all that. Now, you can also, if you, for whatever reason, you're unable to come to church, you can always watch us on www.healingjesus.tv. You can always tell your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, your relatives abroad that they can join us in the services on the internet. Right. Marriage Counseling School registration begins 28, uh, 20th of January, okay, and um, ends next week, 27th. So if for any reason you do not have, um, you, you have not yet registered, kindly register now and then carry on from there, all right. All DMMs have a meeting with you at, what time did I give for the other service? 6 p.m. All DMMs, very important in the church. I have a meeting with you at 6 p.m. And all pastors, a meeting is three. The reason I'm trying to say three and six is because I hear there's a football match in between. And some of you are almost unbelievers. So, three o'clock pastors and then 6 p.m. DMM meeting. All right. Fantastic. Thanksgiving offerings. Mr. and Mrs. Amen. I thank God. 100 Ghana cities for... A successful wedding yesterday. Are they here? Mr. Can you stand and give the church a wave? Wow, the colors are not easy at all. With the bright, hey, your, your bridesmaids and your page boys or whatever, you also stand and give the church a wave, all of you. Wow. It's not an easy situation. Fantastic. God bless you. And um, Reverend. And Lady Pastor Ben Johnson, I thank you God, 100 Ghana cities for a successful naming ceremony of their second daughter um, on Friday. Put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> Wonderful. It's time to give an offering. So everybody take out a good offering today. This morning, take out a generous, mighty, powerful, wonderful offering. Come up, come up. Christ says, walk up quickly, quickly, waiting for you on stage. All right. Clap for the choir as they come. Okay. Now take out your offerings, every one of us. Take out a good offering. Take out 25 CDs. Take out 42 CDs, take out 71 CDs, take out um, $38. I mean, take out a good offering, an offering that you believe is good. Take it out. My sister is finding herself. Take out an offering now. It's not time to find yourself. Look for offering. You're looking at me. You're, I don't want to mention your name. That's why. All right. Lift up your offerings to the Lord. Oh, you're looking beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Lift up your offerings. Offerings. High above your head. At the back, every one of us, kindly let your hand go up high. Okay. Are they dancers? Wow. What a shock. Okay. Right. Lift it up high. Father, I want to thank you so much for today. We ask you to bless our giving, bless our seed, and be glorified in our our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. 
Forgetting those things that are behind, I press on. Someone say, I press on towards the mark of the high calling. Why? Because if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Hallelujah. And all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Put your hands together and give God praise, somebody. Bless you, Jesus. Anybody glad for their salvation? Give God a wave. We bless you, Jesus. We are not going back, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Help me cry, sing. I've been changed. Sing. I've been changed. I've been healed. Healed. Freed. Freed. Delivered. Delivered. I have found so much joy. I found joy. I found peace. Peace. Grace. Grace. And favor. Your testimony sing, I've been changed. I've been changed. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I've been free. Delivered. Delivered. I found joy.
put your hands together and say, never going back to the way it was. No, 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 never going back. Say, never, no, never going back. No, never, no, never, never. Sing, I won't go back. I won't go back. I won't go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be. No. your name, Jesus. Wow, was it beautiful? I said, was it beautiful? Why don't you clap for them one more time? Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Are you excited today? Wow, something powerful is about to happen to you. Amen. How many of you believe what I'm saying? Well, um, all over the world, people are watching us on the internet. And particularly, all our pastors in America have gathered in Orlando, Florida, watching us live. So we greet all of you from Orlando. Can I give the, give the pastors in Orlando a wave? We, God bless you in Orlando, Florida. God bless you. We are right here in Ghana where God lives and has a hotel in Orlando. That's God's permanent address. So keep loving God and serving him as we are doing our best here. One welcome the crowd to give us another beautiful song. Clap your hands and welcome them. One more time. Hallelujah. Give God praise, somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. We won't go back and we'll work the works of him who sent us while it is day. Because the night cometh when no man can work. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on. Oh, 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 yeah. Now is the time. Oh, yes. I must work for him. I must work for him. 
service and you're having an encounter hallelujah we had an encounter with the praise and worship powerful we had an encounter with the choir and we had an encounter with the offering and now it's an encounter with the word of God are you excited this morning I believe that you will never be the same again hold your neighbor's ear if he has a year, he can find the year under the hair. The sisters who have hidden the year under the Brazilian hair. Find the year and put the year and said, it's time for encounter with the word of God. Hallelujah. And once again, our bishop is in the house. I don't know about you, but I'm excited today. Stand to your feet and give him a shout of praise. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the word of God that is able to change our lives. We are thankful. We are grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. All right. Glory to God. This morning, we are continuing on our uh, important teaching on humility. I shared with you last week about how to be a child or to be a servant. So, turn with me to James, chapter number four. And um, we have a very important scripture, James 4, verse 10. Humble yourself by the side of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. James chapter 4 and verse 6. He gives more grace, wherefore he saith, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. So God is not happy with pride. He doesn't like pride. Amen. Um, and you wouldn't either. Amen? I said you wouldn't either. Okay? Once I had um, two different people that were working for me. One of them was perfect in the sense that he didn't do anything wrong. And the other one was not perfect in the sense that he went and got himself into all kinds of sins and mistakes. And some months later, can you hear me? Can you hear me at the back? I hear the people at the back don't hear very well. Is it true? You talk a lot. People move around. We are, going to, we are going to buy. You see the speakers here? We are going to buy the same size and put it at, over there. It's going to blast you out of that 
back seat. So Bishop Saki, please buy this big size of speakers and blast the back rows. Are you going to do that? Yeah, we're going to blast out all back benches who don't hear the word of God properly. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. All right. Glory to God. So God does not like proud people. Now I was telling you that I had two different people that were working for me. And one day I, I look back at these two people, try to analyze the difference between them. And I realized that I was more attracted to the brother with all the sins and the mistakes. I like him much more. I wanted him to be with me. I like him. I prefer him. That, and I realized that the difference was that the guy who was perfect and hadn't done anything wrong before was, you know, he was like proud and stiff. And the brother who had, you know, done so many wrong things was humble and flowing. So I was thinking between these two, which one would I choose? And I chose the more sinful brother. And you see, that's how it is. Sometimes you wonder why God chooses certain people. You know, and sometimes God even allows you to fall into sin before he even calls you so that you'll be cool. You don't feel too good when God is using you. Mercy. What do you think? So, um, pride is not a good thing. Amen. Uh, it's terrible. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye all of you be subject one to another and be clothed in humility. For God resisted the proud. Now, today, I hear some brethren are watching us from Orlando. Hi, all of you there in Orlando. Can you see me? <laughs> all right, I can't see you, but I have faith that you are there. Same way, I can't see God, but I have faith that God is watching. Wow. Is it not amazing? Fantastic. All right. Now, today I want to move away from how to be humble to how you can be puffed up. How a Christian can be puffed up. How you can be puffed up. Which is the other form, other, um, what do you call it? Thing, opposite of humility. Okay? Now, puffed up. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18. Now, some of you are puffed up as though I would not come to you but I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up but the power. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 18 and verse 19. I will come to you shortly if the Lord will and we will know, you know, not just the speech. You know, sometimes people talk a lot but not just their speech whether they are just puffed up because of the way they are speaking, but if they really have some substance to them. Amen. Are you listening to me? 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as must not be named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. Amen. The Bible is saying here that somebody has gone to sleep with his father's wife or his mother. All right? And instead of being humble, they were swollen or they were puffed up and they become proud. Okay? So sin should have rather had the natural effect of cooling you down. So you don't sound too strong and too forthright. And you just be cool. Take your time. Just be humble. But instead, they were puffed up and they were angry and talking 
confidently, boldly. All right. So again, you see another scripture throughout the book of Corinthians. Paul used the description of being puffed up to depict pride. And in the English language today, we we when you well, one of the synonyms of pride or proud when somebody's proud, big, we we say he's puffed up. All right. And then in Colossians chapter 2, we are reading all the scriptures so that we have the basis. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Again, you can see he contrasts humility with being puffed up. So he says, don't, 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 don't let anybody deceive you with, into a voluntary or the American Bible says false humility. As he's comparing false humility or voluntary humility and he's comparing it with in the same scripture, the same, another English word, vainly puffed up, all right, by his fleshly mind. Right, so to be, to be proud is to be puffed up. Now, how many want to be swollen? Now, are you there? Hello? Now, to be swollen is not a good thing. Nobody wants to be swollen. Now, if you wake up in the morning and your feet are swollen, it is not a good sign. I can tell you that straight away, free of charge. All right? Because being swollen, you imagine how many years it has taken for your shoes, your feet to get to size 8, size 7, size 12, size 10. How many years? It took you so many years. Now, supposing one day you get up, you are size 7. When you wake up in the morning, you are size 9. That means you are swollen. Okay? Now, that swelling, all right, means something. Now, if you're a doctor and somebody comes to you and says, oh, I'm swollen. My stomach is swollen. It's, it's a bad sign. You see, all the, you know, in medicine, there are symptoms or signs. Each one of them has a meaning. And, 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 and you see, to a doctor, sometimes, you know, people come to see a doctor you know, if you force the doctor, he will always give you an injection. But if you listen, many things that you are telling the doctor, there's nothing that he really has to do about it because what you are saying doesn't mean anything. If you come to the doctor and say, I have a pain here, then it burns me, then it passes here, then it comes down, then it goes to the left, then it goes to the back and comes through my foot. Immediately, we don't have many things that follow this symptom that you have described. So what we would tell you is you need to rest. Do you understand? You need some rest. You need vitamins. And take it easy. It will be okay. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And the doctor is not so worried about what you are saying. But if you come and you tell the doctor that when I woke up in the morning, I look in the mirror, my face was swollen like round. And then during the day, it came back to normal. Immediately, you, you, your mind, if you're a doctor, starts racing and thinking of so many bad things. If your feet, your legs are swollen, because swelling, whether natural swelling or spiritual swelling, are terrible indicators of something terribly wrong with you. Yeah, you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want your feet to start swelling. You just wake up in the morning. It's swollen. You you press it. It goes in like a. Like, a, a, like dough when you are you're about to break bread before you break you just press it, it goes in and it stays in you wouldn't want that because it means maybe your kidneys are not working well because the kidney is bringing out all the waters and the water are not going out anymore or your heart is the pump which is pumping the, the, the river is going but now it has slowed down so because the pump you know the water pump is not pumping so the heart is failing so when they have failure, the heart is failing. You see that it's swelling. Things are getting swollen. Right-sided, sometimes left-sided. Failure. It's failing of the heart. 
or liver. All these are big, big words. When you say the big word, liver, kidney, heart, liver. In the field, the, the liver produces proteins. It produces albumin. So when it stops producing, it fails. You see there's less protein in the system. And then it's, you start to swell. Or when a child has kwashiorkor, there's not enough protein and meat. The child starts to swell. So you see that the swelling you are seeing is a very dangerous Terrible things are happening. Either kidney, liver, something. When somebody's stomach is swollen, sometimes it's cancer. And the whole stomach becomes full of water. And that is how it is when you see somebody who is swollen and so big. And puffed up. There are a lot of serious problems with you spiritually. Are you listening to me? Check with your neighbor whether he's puffed. Puffed up. In the natural and the spirit. Hey. Check the, check the feet to see whether there is some puffing. You see, once you can see your veins, you're okay. <laughs> Mercy. Doctors, what I'm saying, is it correct or is it not correct? Yeah. You are the professionals. Now, are you listening to me? How you can be puffed up. I'm now showing you how you can be. Would you like to know how you can be? So that you decide I will not be. I don't want to be too big. Okay. There are seven of them. I shared one with one service and I'm sharing one with you because I don't have many opportunities so I'm going to carry on. If you are interested you can get it. If not just have what you have. So the first one is become a Lucifer. Be a Lucifer. Alright? Liesl, you understand what I'm talking about? Be a Lucifer. Wow. Number two, be a Vashti. Esther chapter one, be a, you see, the, there are people who have exemplified and demonstrated what it means to be puffed up. And so if you want to be puffed up, you, you just become a modern version of that person. So you can become a modern version of Lucifer. Or a modern version of Vashti is number two. And you will notice in Esther chapter one, verse number 10. And I want you to listen carefully. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehumen, Bizar, Harbona, Bikta, and Abachta. Zithar and Karkas, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Azarus the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king. Hmm? With the crown royal. To show the people and the princess her beauty. Wow! The king sent seven delegations. Seven delegations to bring Vashti to show the people and the princess her beauty for she was fair to look upon. Wow! What a blessing. So this, this, I mean, you see, listen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven points. This is the second point. Whichever service you fall into, it's your luck that you fell into that service. It's good fortune. It's not that I have targeted some people at this service or have not. No. It's just that you are falling into the second service. So if you are in the first service, don't say you are Lucifer because I preach about Lucifer. I finish with that. Now I'm Vashti. I'm on Vashti. Now, if you want to be puffed up, as a woman or a wife, 
you can become a Vashti. Vashti is not a man, so I cannot preach about a man Vashti. <laughs> I mean you can check my notes whether it's number one or two come and see come and check come around what is this you see number one is what be a Lucifer number two is what be a Vashti yeah is it number seven that I've brought forward no not at all it's number two okay so it says confirm that it's number two No, you may think that I've rigged it. You may think I've rigged it. And these days, there's a lot of rigging. I wanted to do a biometric verification. (laughs) And, but the Queen Vasti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains that the seven people who he sent she, he, um, she embarrassed them when they stood before she said she told them you can tell him that I'm not coming hey Charlie hey Mehuman was surprised Bizarre was surprised Harbona couldn't believe what he was hearing Victor was shocked Abagata was amazed. Zita was, I mean, almost in coma. And Kakas was, I mean, dumbfounded. Hey! I've never heard a woman talk like that before. She said, tell him. I said, I'm not coming. In your... She refused to come. She refused to come. Go to the verse before that. She was beautiful. Bring Vashti the queen before the king. Bring Vashti the queen. Yeah. Bring, bring the queen. Let me sit down. We're all sitting down. <laughs> to show her beauty. What's wrong with that? What do you think is wrong with that? You are beautiful. Because your beauty, you use your beauty to get him. You've got to use your beauty to keep him. And if you use your beauty to get him, you've got to maintain your beauty. You cannot lose it. You cannot swell up and just lose it. Oh my Lord. Okay? Show the people your beauty. For she was fair to look on. She was tired of these things. I'm tired of this going to come and show your soul to the people, and I'm, I'm tired of it. But you were not tired when they were doing the wedding for you, when you were being appointed. Now they are calling you, you will not come. Tell him, I say, I'm not coming. Okay? Now notice verse 15. The king called for a meeting. and said, what shall we do unto the queen Vashti? According to law. Because she has not performed the commandment of the king by the chamberlains. And this was the advice that was given. You see, when you are puffed up, you will fall down. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him. Let it be written among the laws of the Persians that Vashti should come no more before the king and let the king give her royal estate to another that is better than she is. You know, she was fair. But when you are fair and you don't have any other qualities, it cancels out your fairness or your beauty. So you cannot just be beautiful, sisters. If you're going to do well, your beauty, you cannot just be beautiful. You need other qualities. 
to make somebody happy or to have a happy life. Amen? Amen. You can't just be beautiful. So, just doing your hair. And then you cover it when you go home. And you just cover it up with a net or a, a kind of scarf. And you change completely into a different caricature. Completely different looking from how you look when you come out of the house. Why don't you wear that when you are coming out? Why don't you wear that when you are coming to church? So that you come as you are. There's a song, come as you are, isn't it? How does it go? Come as you are. All right? Anyway, you don't know the song. Okay. Now, let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree shall be made and published, all the wives, all the wives will take note. Because you see, the guys were very worried about their own marriages. So it was a message for other wives. All wives shall give to their husbands honor both to the great husbands and to the small husbands. In other words, both to the husbands, like husbands who are big shots. Because there's a difference between the life when you are married to a so-called big, great person and then married to a small person. Do you understand? Different lives and different experiences. Some can be good wives of a small man. But if you were to marry a great man, you cannot handle it. Yeah. Because you don't know what to do. You have no skills. All right. And the wife shall give to their husband's honor, both to the great and to the small. All right. So, brothers and sisters, this is the story of Vashti. Okay. And um, she, another. A person was chosen and that was Esther we all know the story of Esther so the way you can be puffed up is to just be like Vashti okay which is the following things number one never say yes isn't it huh, huh. never say yes Never say no. Number three, never agree. You know them already. Never agree. Never flow. Hey. Never flow. Never bend. Never bend. And you will notice a common argument that comes up when people are married after some time is you'll find some husband and I'm talking about wives I'm not talking about husbands and wives when a husband own comes it will come at its turn a lot of wives are described as stubborn how many have heard some people in marriage saying that my wife is stubborn? Or you have experienced, or you know, not yourself, not your marriage, in case you are sitting by your wife, you know of somebody who has told his wife before that you are stubborn. Or she doesn't seem to be listening. Raise up your right hand if you know of something like that ever in the world before since you came. Yeah. Never say yes. If the answer should be yes, you never say yes. If the answer should be no, you never say no. You never agree. Never bend. Never yield. Never. Wow. Yeah. 
Never change your mind. Hmm? But I, I'm going to show you something from the Bible. The next one, never be nice. You are nice when you go out smiling. <laughs> Taking pictures and being pleasant. But you are different in the house. Plenty. You haven't seen some before. You are looking at me as if you... What is he talking about? Oh, we've never, it's just like when I, when I talk about SHS and JSS. Being useless. It's as if Ghanaians are now hearing for the first time that Apo is something that is leaked in Ghana. As if, hey, Apo. Meanwhile, everybody is doing Apo. It's an apostolic exam. It's an apostolic exam. <laughs> he will say, ah, Apo. What are you talking about? It's just like the rigging. Ah, as if you have something wonderful that you, ah. Never be nice. Never be gracious. Gracious. Gracious means to f never flow. Another one, never flow. But your husband is asking you to come and show your beauty. Never. And you have to show your beauty more even in the house. Your, your naked beauty. Yeah. One lady was, uh, her daughter was going to get married. She, she, she went to the daughter and she told, let me tell you something. I have something to tell you. She told the daughter, I said that there is something that I take pride in that your father has never seen me naked before. Uh, I just, I mean, something, you know, you have to watch yourself. Uh, uh. Oh my, oh my Lord. Never be gracious. Never flow. Never give in. Never give up. Never say I, I yes. Never say no. Oh. And so you hear that you are stubborn. And they see that the person is discovering that this nice looking creature is very stubborn. You're all looking at me. Ah. <laughs> it's just like the Apo and the JSS. <laughs> ah, is there Apo? Is there Apo? It's apostolic. Beauty and the show of the ladies. All the ladies are buying hair. This is the hair you can buy. If the beauty and the show will match a little of humility, Anka, we shall be happy in the world. Ah. Wow. I'm preaching. I'm feeling free. Don't worry. I'll say everything. I'm saying it. And I'm preaching to women. God, Basti is a woman, not a man. Today is International Women's Day. Wow. If the show, the show that you put on to impress can match humility, wow. That would have been happiness. More happiness. But you see, It is in the fulfillment of the curse and the punishment of Eve that your stubbornness comes out. 
Because Eve was punished to like a man. Not to love him or to desire him. To have one. To have one. To own one and control one. Even if he's in London, it's okay. Or even if he's America. And then anybody so I have one, he's in America. Not to be with him. Oh, and not to love him or care for him. Uh, to say I have one. Uh, he's, he's in Kumasi, I'm in Accra. They don't, they don't love. You don't like, I, I love. God has cursed. You see, the curse is a punishment. It was a punishment to Eve for what she did. So, that means that marriage and men will bring sorrow to women. The two sources of sadness for women will come through marriage to men and through children. Through their children. These are the two ways they will become sad in this. Life. Crying and tears will come through these two things. So, when the stubbornness begins, it is so that the punishment can be activated. That's what they don't know. They, they think they are being stubborn to someone. Say, eh? yeah. 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 But not knowing that it is to activate. Because when you are stubborn, you are a witch. When you are stubborn, you are a witch. So we have a lot of witches in the church today. Me, I'm not afraid of you. I'm just preaching to you coolly. I have a lot of witches in the church. Charismatic spiritual witches. Because the Bible says stubbornness is as witchcraft. When you see somebody very stubborn and unyielding, never changing, never change your mind, never agree that person is a witch. Ooh. Yeah. The Bible says stubbornness is as witchcraft. So how you can be puffed up is to just become another Vashti, a modern one who will not show her beauty. When you go to your house and you covered your hair, have you not removed your beauty? Yes. Come and let me put a net on your hair right now and see how you look like. Then you see that you are transformed into a caricature. I will just use that word. A caricature. You are just about to join Tintin and other cartoon creatures. <laughs> I want to see your beauty. That is what the man said. Come and show the people. Come and, come and do what I want. Now, but as you grow, no, what I want, what you want, what I want, what you want. They become one, one draw. You see the house is more like two equals that are I mean, a, a soccer match with two referees or a soccer match without referees. Can you imagine a soccer match with two referees? One is on the, this side and one is on this side. I say, no, it's a goal. No, it's not a goal. It's not a goal. It's a goal. It's not a goal. Wow. But you see, the, the curse of Eve is, is coming to you now. You are, going to, you are going to have sadness in your marriage and your life. And the sadness is going to come through your stubbornness. Turn to Isaiah. Turn to Isaiah chapter 1. Go to verse 18. 16. 17. Okay. Now. In Isaiah chapter 1, you see very clearly from verse 18, the Lord says, Come and let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now, if you notice verse 19 of Isaiah, Isaiah is the most quoted prophet in the Old Testament. Jesus always mentioned things from Isaiah. All right, and Paul also. 
So Matthew is full of quotations from Isaiah. Now it says here, he's one of the most profound preachers. He said, if you are willing, or if you are flowing, do you see? If you can flow. Do you see? If you flow. Not only, well, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. In other words, if you are going to enjoy the good of something, you must be flowing and also obedient to enjoy the good. Let's, say, let's take Ghana. Ghana, Ghana, is a, Ghana is a great country. There are some people who enjoy the good of Ghana. And some people enjoy the bad of Ghana. There are some people who don't like Ghana at all. But there are some people who don't want to leave Ghana. Because in every country, there are people who enjoy the good of that land. Are you listening to me? I'm, I'm explaining something to you. So if you take a man, you have married a man. There are some people who would have enjoyed your husband. And have enjoyed the good of that man. Do you see? But how can you enjoy the good of that thing that God has given to you? If you are flow, will, not just obedient, but willing, because you can obey with an angry face and, a, and, a, and, a, and an attitude. Yeah. I mean, many years ago, I stopped being interested in doing marriage counseling because I found that after spending a lot of time talking to people, they don't actually do what you say. So I lost, even, I lost interest. But the Bible said because the preacher was wise, he continued to preach. We continue to preach just because we are wise, but not because people are changing. They don't change much. Yeah. The Bible says, but because the preacher was wise, he continued to teach. So many people are not enjoying maybe the good that they want because there needs to be something to activate the curse in your life to start to bring you sadness and sorrow. And the reason, the thing that happened is for your stubbornness to be activated. And then when it's activated... The punishment of a witch will be your portion. You cry. Put it back, Isaiah 1. Yeah. Now, if you notice now, listen, oh, this is the opposite. I'm about to show you the opposite of being willing and obedient. It's the very next verse. Verse 20. He said, but if you refuse, you see, you see, Vashti, refuse. Refuse and rebel. You shall be devoured. You see, refuse, you always, you don't, you don't really receive. You see, the word refuse is a good summary of a certain attitude. Refuse. Mm. Mm. You never agree, never flow, never believe, never change, never give in, never change your mind. Never, 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 never. The Bible is saying that by refusing and then rebelling is the disobedience. So there's a refusing attitude. And there's a rebelling. Not, now, the first one says, go back to the verse before. It says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat. You shall eat. But the next verse, you will be eating. Look at the, the verse. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured. You will be eating. You are the one who will be eating. Where are the first before you would have eaten the good? But this one, you will be eating. You will be devoured by refusing and rebelling. So, how did Vashti fall? We know that she was proud because she fell. But pride can't become a fall. How did she suffer? Because she was blown up. So big that even the king You'll be surprised that wives of kings and wives of some of the important people, the things that they can do and, be, and how they can behave. Yeah, the Bible says that all husbands, both the wives of the great and the small, all the wives of the great and the small would comply. Because it's not only wives of small boys who misbehave, but wives of the great also misbehave. And, and we have an example there. Yeah, examples, Mikal. Mikael was thrown out of the kingdom. Then he said, how to... It's today that we don't have polygamy, especially among pastors. If polygamy was allowed, oh. Even when they came to ask, all these questions we struggle with, they asked Jesus, so Jesus, is it allowed to put away your wife when the woman is not... Not that when they are not having... If the woman is not behaving well, is it allowed to put her out? Jesus said, no, that was not how it's supposed to be. 
Then the disciples said, then it's, it's very hard for a man that he can't sack his wife. Ha! It will be very, very difficult if you can't sack your wife. And Jesus, then Jesus now moved into eunuchism and said, oh, it is only for those with whom it has been given who can stay away from this marriage. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sharing with you, you know, if you want to, you see, humility will make you happy. You know, humble people are chosen. I like you. I like you. Come. Even you are attracted to somebody because the person does what you say. Do this, do this, do this, do this. If I take, let's say, Ida in terms of music, let's say I'm working with music, the things that I told her, sing like this, sing like this, do this, she's done them, most of them. Many of the singers before, they will not do it. It's like they know about music. They know this, they know this, they know this. You just leave them alone. That's how come you know her today. That's how she has traveled all over the world with me. From where to where she has been all over. She's eating the good because of humility. But a lot of other singers, I've had a lot of other singers, a lot of people. Not only that, even in work, just work. I'm working with people. I work, I work with people who have asked me, begged me to travel with them. I said, oh, there are people who will not ask me to travel. I will, take, I will go with them all over the world. All over. With God, they are flowing. They are willing. They are flowing. They are obedient. If you want to enjoy good, you know, you, you just learn how to flow. And you see, with this man who is, you don't think, you don't even respect him. But you don't realize that as time goes. As for the pastor, everybody is nice. When you see me, you are nice, you smile, you are humble, you look this day, oh, bishop, oh, bishop. When you even speak on the phone, hello, hello, ah? I said, oh, this is bishop. Oh, bishop, bishop, hello. Oh, oh, sorry, I didn't know it was you. Sorry, you didn't know it was me. Why, why do you change when you talk to me? Be how you are. Be natural. Be yourself. Your, your natural self is not a nice self. Your natural self is not a nice self. So ladies, it takes more than just looking nice. As for looking nice, you just go to fashion something here now. You buy hair. Give me one hair. Even me, I can, if next week I'll turn into a lady and come. You see my hair, you see my nails. And I'll show you, as for being a lady, being looking, you can, I'll just put some two cushions here and start moving. I'll be very beautiful. I'll put some lipstick and you say, well, somebody will say, I want to be Lavedos. I say, look at you. You want to be like those your math. <laughs> flow. In the church, flow. Don't refuse everything you always you don't flow. It's a, a meeting before you flow. Talking before you flow. Lot of discussion before you flow. Rewind and rewind after two years, three years before you won't even still flow well. Never change, never agree, never bend, never yield, never bow, never. never. You will suffer, I tell you. You will be devout. And you think you are making somebody suffer, but you are also not happy. <laughs> yeah, you are being devout. Your happiness is finished. Yeah, your happiness is gone. Or the curse has been activated by your stubbornness. Your stubbornness has converted you into a witch. And being a witch has attracted the punishment of God. Because the Bible says, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Wow. Look, I have seven points. And my time for is up already with one point. All right. Next week, by the grace of God, I will show you how to be puffed up number three. Yeah. Look at Mikal. She was Mrs. Madame. God saw said, let us give my daughter that she may be a snare unto David. And David also took her and she became his wife. She was so big that she was now rebuking David in the house. They sacked her, they sacked her, they sacked her where others became the queens. What? So, do you want to be sacked? No, not even your mind. You think uh -huh, that is also what magnifies the pride in the marriages today because it's like you cannot be sacked. But another form of sacking is happening. Yeah. You see the sadness. You have been sacked from joy. You have been sacked from happiness. 
that have been sucked from pleasure and joy and flowing. You don't experience it. You have been driven out of the courts of joy and the courts of the king. You, you dwell in loneliness and sorrow because you don't flow. Wow. So learn to flow. You are all looking at me apostolically. <laughs> you don't like my preaching, you see. Look, I don't care whether you don't like my preaching or not. It doesn't matter to me. I'm supposed to preach the word of God to you. Amen. How many realize that what I'm preaching is true? Do you know somebody who behaves like the way I'm preaching? Raise your right hand if you know somebody. Not necessarily you, but somebody. Yeah. Try to flow. One day, I went to a certain grown-up's house. The grown-up was living with his grown-up wife. And then the wife was serving us dinner. So they served us. Me, the visitor, and then the husband, the grown-up husband. As soon as the wife went out of the place that she served us, the, the old man took his, his walking stick and pointed. He was talking to me. I said, what? Always angry. Always angry. And I just look at you, I don't understand. A hey, mobile. You think you are making somebody sad. You are, you are the one who will be sad. And you are the one who is sad. He says, if you refuse, oh, fair, oh, a resistant. Okay, you are now more than a resistor cable. I mean, we can measure you in ohms. Do you know electricity ohms? We use ohms to re- measure your resistance and your refusal, levels of refusal. Do you understand electricity ohms, resistance, something, something? Yeah, mega ohms. Come and show your beauty. Good preaching. Ah, there are. I've said so many things, but it's enough. Yeah, be abashed. Your bigness. Those curtains that you are fixing in your house, somebody can come and draw it for you. As you have fixed them, somebody will come and be drawing that you never thought would draw it. He said, let her estate be given to another. Not what they say, what I've seen it practically. The table that you are setting, somebody can be walking there now, serving some time to come, you will see that somebody else is serving and smiling. Whereas, but often uh, it's like you are baptized in petrol, petrol or kerosene. Hmm. Uh, have made, even as I'm preaching, some people have made themselves, if you refuse, they have made themselves like, if you refuse. They are not impressed. They are just looking somewhere like this. If you refuse, and rebel, you shall be devoured. You will not eat. Not that you eat the bad of the land, but you will be eating. Put that verse back. If you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured. Mercy. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So let's flow. Let's flow in the church. There's a song. Come down. Come down. Sing that song for me. Say yes. Uh, uh, say play, you know. Come. Sing for me. You see, Christians have to learn how to say yes. I read in a book many years ago, Jesus always said yes. When he said, can you come and heal my child? Yes. Can you heal my servant? Yes. I read it in a book. It was a chapter. And I always remember, Jesus always said, yes, I can. I can. I will come. Can you come? I can. I will. I will come. Don't say no. No. If, if somebody ever asks you for money, don't say no. You know, even something, what you can give, learn to say yes. Come down, come down here, sing it. 
Sing it, sing it for me. Yes, Lord, I really do want you. Yes, Lord, yes. I really do need you. I hear you whispering in my ears. I feel you tugging at my heart and knocking on my door. Yes, Lord, I really do want you now. to live forever say yes Lord say yes yes Lord do you want your sins forgiven say yes Lord yes, yes Lord tell me do you need someone who will always be there for you no matter what you're going through he'll always be there for you just say yes, Lord. Say yes. I really do want you. Yes, now. say yes. When God asks you, do you want to go to heaven? Say yes, Lord. I want to go to heaven. I really do want you. Yes, Lord. I really do need you. I hear you whispering in my ear. I feel you tugging at my you learn to say yes yes do you want to have a purpose say yes Lord mm. yes Lord do you want to put him first say yes Lord yes I want to put you yes, first Lord. do you want to stand for him in everything you do yes I want to he has a plan for you just for you Will you say yes, Lord? I really do want you now. How many want to start saying yes instead of no? Yes, Lord. Instead of no. I really do want you, yes, yes. Lord. I really do need you. I hear you whispering in my ear. I feel you tugging at my heart. Flow if you are willing and obedient. going to start to say yes yes do you want to live forever mm. say yes lord yes. yes lord do you want your sins forgiven say yes lord yes lord do you want your sins do forgiven do you want to stand for him in everything you do he has a plan for you say yes. just for you Yes. Ooh, oh, yes, Lord. Yes, I really do. When he calls you, you say yes. Lord. When you are called, say yes. Don't learn do to say no. Don't ever. learn to be say a refuser. Yes, learn to say yes. Yes, Lord. And to flow. Do you wanna put him first? Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Your feet. Yes, I really do want you now. Oh, yes, Lord. I really do want you. Yes, Lord. Stand to your feet. I really I want really you. Yes. Do need yes. you. I, hear I need you. I need you. I want you. Whispering in my ear. Say yes. 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 You tugging yes. At my heart. Say yes, Lord. And knocking on my door. us to say yes when you call us cause us to be flowing Lord and to be yielding and to say yes 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 Lord I really do want you I really do like you I do need you I do accept you do you want your sins forgiven yes of course Lord do you want to live forever yes do you want to be happy yes 
say yes and flow. Thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you for healing us of the arrogance of being puffed up and too big. We ask for your grace and your mercy in our lives. In Jesus' name, we pray. And as every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you are here today, you want to give your life to Jesus. Pastor, please pray with me. Do you want to live forever? Huh. Do you want your sins forgiven? If you are here today, you want your sins forgiven, you want Jesus to come into your life, say yes. And lift up your right hand and I'm going to pray with you right now. You want your sins to be forgiven. You want Jesus to come into your life. Say yes right now by lifting up your hand and I'm going to pray with you. Lift up at the back everywhere you stand. You want your, your sins forgiven. You want Jesus to come into your life. God bless you. I see all your hands lifted up high. Pastor, pray with me. I want Jesus to come into my life. I want to be a new person. God bless you. If you've lifted your hand, lift it up high so I can see. And come to me in the front. Come, come to me from wherever you are standing. Do you want to wanna live forever? Say yes, Lord. Come, come. If yes, you lifted Lord. your hand, come. You want to live forever? Do you want your sins forgiven? Say yes, Lord. If you Lord. lifted your hand, come all yes, the way. Yes, Lord. Tell me, do you need someone who will always be come. there for yes. you? No yes. No matter what you go. God bless you'll you. always be there for you come just say yes Lord say yes I really do want you now all right let us pray please pray this prayer with me come quickly say Lord Jesus please forgive me for my sins I open my heart I receive Jesus Christ as my Savior Please have mercy on me. Please write my name in the book of life. I open my heart to you, Jesus. I say yes, Lord. Come into my life. Make me a new person. From today, I will follow Jesus and I will serve Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you too. Please, can you go with our pastor for one minute and then you come back. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. Let's welcome Bishop E.A.T. Saki. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I really do want you. Yes, How many Lord. want Jesus? I really do need you. How many want to you? say I yes? You. I need you. Whispering in my ear. I feel you Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. And you may be seated. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. Are we blessed today? Wow. What a word, what a word, what a word, what a word, what a word. Hallelujah. We are glad we have the pastor that we have. How many of you are excited with the pastor that God has blessed us with? Amen. His preaching is practical. It's relevant. We can understand the preaching. And we can apply it to our lives. I tell you, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed with Bishop's preaching. Sunday after Sunday, week after week. Every time he comes through, practical teaching. Look, I tell you, in this church, eh, our judgment will be more because we have heard preaching. Teaching of the word, down to word teaching. And if we would apply it into our lives, our lives would change totally, totally. So I want to thank the bishop for being who he is. We thank God for the grace of God on his life. We thank God for the privilege that we have to hear him preach every time and to, and to 
have him address issues. And when he's preaching, he's preaching, the preaching is, oh, you are. Keep smiling. Nobody will know it's you. It's only when you don't smile that everybody will know that ah, you are the one. But if you smile, they will not know how it is. You know what I'm saying? But it's practical and it's good for you. Amen. And when he's preaching, don't preach against the preaching in your head. So what about the men? He says preaching to the woman. You receive it. Eh? One day, it's maybe, even if it's not our turn, it's your turn now. So take it. I'm so blessed by the preaching, I tell you. If your wife is not here or you are planning to get married, you have uh, somebody you are trying to propose to, buy this message for the lady as a pre-proposal gift. And if she comes, oh, I was so blessed. That means that she'll be the right lady. But she must say that after 10 years after the marriage, she must say, I was so blessed. What a shock. Hallelujah. Well, the service has come to an end. We're going to receive our tithes today. If you brought your tithes to church, hey, learn to flow. Amen. That, I'm sure the summary of all that the song that they sang, the, I just sang the end of the preaching. Just say yes, flow. Flowing is beautiful. If you flow, you enjoy what you have. If you don't flow, you'll be destroyed by what you have. Hey, that's an important revelation. You know. Everybody should remember Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. If you flow, you will enjoy. If you don't flow, that thing will destroy you. Hmm. God is wild, I tell you. Right. If you brought your tithes, can you stand to your feet, please? Brought your tithe. 10% of all that God has blessed you with. Please stand to your feet and let's receive your tithe. Fantastic. Can you lift up your envelope and so we can pray together or your card? Right. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for today as we honor you with our tithe. Be glorified in our giving. We thank you for the privilege of tithing. We thank you for the privilege of paying our tithes. We ask you to that the scriptures that are harvest will be bountiful. May that scripture come to pass in every life that is here. We thank you Father in Jesus name and everybody said Amen. Please come to the front and put your tights in the basket or the box right here. Clap for them as they come. Fantastic. 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 Keep coming from the back everywhere you are. Keep coming. You're honoring the Lord in your, with your tithes. Honor him. And he will be gracious to you. Fantastic. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Okay. Everybody should um, take out your offerings now. Thank you very much. Take out your offering. Right. Right. Take out your offerings, please. Bridegroom and bride offerings. Ah. Uh, the brides and bridegrooms are very colorful. All of you together, white and gold, and then what color is this? Peach. Is it peach and what? Purple. Peach and purple, white and gold. Eesh. It's not a simple situation. You have a you're having a purple wedding, a purple marriage, and a golden marriage. Because you have a wife that says, Yes, Lord. <laughs> hey, it's not easy until it's easy. Please lift up your offerings. Lift it up high. 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 Everybody in the church. Everybody in the church. Let your hand go higher than your head, please. I beg you. Father, I want to thank you so much for today. We appreciate you. Grateful to you for this privilege we have to give. We ask you to be glorified in our giving. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please take out a booster. Kind of, just flow. That's how it is. Don't fight against the, the offering in your head. Just flow. So you eat the blessing of the, of the, of the land. So take out a booster. 
uh, and lift the booster up also. Father, we bless our boosters also in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, uh, receive the offerings. And just a couple more announcements. We'll be out of here. Um, it looks like many people bring their children, young people to the church. Now, we have a very vibrant, spiritual, young people's church in this church. Amen. We have church for those who are born um, two weeks ago and you brought them to church. There's, we call it I Church. Zero to two years. That's the I Church. So if you have a baby who is just six months old, there's a place where they are kept and uh, prayed for and all. They have their own church service. You can take them there. You have, you know, we have the I Church. That is those who are between two and then six, I think. That's K, sorry, K Church. K is between, yeah, between four and six. All right, four and six. So that is another church for, service for them in here, uh, out there in the building. And then we have the J Church, which is from seven to 12. All right. And then after that, we have the Y Church, which is after 12 till they come and join us here. So, I, the, and they would, the young people, the younger people would enjoy their services better than here because they have their own colleagues. They have, they have their own, own um, people of the same age group there and they can flow with all the things that they teach. They're very powerful time. So, and your children will be safely kept. So please, we encourage you to take your children, young people particularly, to the church and in the afternoons also every sunday afternoon from four o'clock to six we have what we call the saved church isn't it saved service every day four o'clock to six that is all the young people have their special service in this cathedral so make sure you bring your young people into all the service that they belong to especially the saved church in the afternoon powerful time and i believe god will be gracious to us. Say amen. Marvelous. Also, remember again that fasting is starting tomorrow. Mm, that's right. It just flow. You'll be okay. You will be okay. We are going to pray. 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 And it's going to be every evening from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And on Saturday morning, we'll meet here from 6 a.m to about 10 a.m. We'll be meeting and praying. So make sure you come. Please, don't let soccer stop you from coming to church. Tell your brother sitting by you, you are the reason why the man is saying what he's saying. Mm. Right. So don't let anything stand in your way this week. And you must get the book, He That Hath. The book is being, it's around um, can you leave them? Those who have the books, do you still have them? Do you still have them anywhere? Right, they have them. Make sure you get the book. It's important. After service, they will be all over the car park and everywhere. Make sure you get them. Don't sit down too quickly. Those who have the book, don't sit down too quickly. Hmm? All right. They will they, they, they get the book before tomorrow and come along. And if, for, like we said, for whatever reason, medical reason, whatever reason, you couldn't fast, still come and pray because the emphasis is on prayer. And I believe God will help us mightily. Stand to your feet, everybody. Now, let me just ask. Can you stand? Can you stand? Hey, some of you brothers, you take a long, a long time to stand. Are you pregnant, brother? Yeah. All right. Now, if you are in this church and you have not registered as a full member of this church, you've been coming to services for maybe the beginning of the year or for some time now, but, uh, but you have not really properly raised as a member of the church. Can I see you by show of your hand? Can you lift your hand up? Okay, fantastic. All right. And you would like to join the church properly. Very good. All of you have lifted your hand up. After the service, I want you to come and see Reverend Isaac Sally. T.D. Sally. Come, come up. Okay, this is Reverend T.D. Sally. Come and see him after he'll be standing right here. He will take you to the place where you can register and join the church. Because you see, we pray for you. 
We care about you. We, we, we do all that we must do for you as your pastors. But we need for you to register properly so that we can have your name. We can pray for you. We can call and visit you. Do whatever we have to do for you as your pastors. So kindly see him. He'll be standing right at, this, um, at the first door here. See him right and he'll take you to the place where you can register. Thank you very much, Reverend Sally. Now, if, is there anybody who came to church for the first time today? Can I see you by show of your right hand? The first time in this church. Is there anybody like that? Wow, lovely, fantastic. God bless all of you. We are very, very happy that you came. We appreciate your coming to church. After the service, uh, well, now, please take up your Bible, your bag. If you came for the first time, I want you to come to me right in the front here, please. Well, come right now. I want to welcome you in a special way before we close. Just come all the way. Come quickly. Welcome to the family. We're glad that you have come to share your life with us. Come for them as they come. Don't as we grow as the journey. May we always be to you what God would have us be. A family always there to be strong and to lead. Welcome to the family. We're glad that you have come to share your life with us. Our pastor standing right here is going to bring you to, um, okay, bring them to my office quickly, all of you, just to have a little word with you and pray with you as well. We are so excited you came today. Amen. And I'm sure you enjoyed the service, isn't it? So kindly go with our pastor right there. Clap for them as they go. Right. Are you excited you came to church today? Turn to your neighbor, hold your neighbor's hand. As, uh, ask your neighbor, do you know Mrs. Vashti? Have you met her anywhere in life? Ask him or her, do you have some of her behaviors, misbehaviors in your life? Lay your hands on the person and cast out the spirit of Vashti from the person now. In the name of Jesus, may you be delivered. I like the way Reverend Kuh is praying for his wife. But on that, he... He said she, she, she didn't fall down. Others will fall down. You didn't fall, Amma. What a shock. She's, she should yield and fall. Okay, share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion, the fellowship, the contribution, and the participation of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. If you have not registered as a proper full member of the church, Reverend Isaac Sally is standing right here. Kindly come and see him. You are living.